everyone, welcome back to the kitchen. The day has come. I promised you I would show you how to make homemade cream cheese from scratch, and that's what we're gonna do today. I can't wait to show you how this all comes together. Okay, you guys asked for it, and today we're going to do it. We're gonna show you how easy it is to make cream cheese. For some reason, cream cheese has been, there's been a problem getting it. A lot of stores are limiting it and what have you. So I thought it might be fun to show you that you can make cream cheese at home. Half a gallon of half and half. I have two cups of heavy cream and I have two cups of buttermilk. And then our acidulator today is going to be apple cider vinegar. The one that I made previously, I use lemon juice. I am currently out of lemon juice. This is a variety that has the mother in the bottle, so I did strain it because you don't want those chunks of the mother going into your cheese. It's just unpleasant looking. I have a tablespoon of kosher salt. This is subjective. We're going to wait until the end when the cheese is all ready and we're going to season it with salt. You definitely are going to want to salt it or it's not going to be as pleasant as you would like it to be. The most important tool you're going to need is an instant read thermometer. You're going to need a strainer. You're going to need a bowl to catch your whey if that's how you want to do it. And you're going to need a clean flour sack towel, kitchen cloth, pillowcase that you don't use for anything but that. Well, you can use cheesecloth, but honestly, I don't like cheesecloth because it is yeah. too open woven. So I'll show you what I use, which is a clean, brand new flour sack towel. We're going to bring our milk up to temperature. I'm gonna set this aside. The buttermilk and the apple cider vinegar, just set aside, they're gonna come later. Set your salt aside too. We're gonna go ahead and pour our half and half and our heavy cream into a nice heavy bottomed stock pot. And I'm gonna set this over medium low heat. So my, my burner goes from a one, which is low, to a high, which is 10, okay? I'm gonna set mine on a four, which is medium low. And then the heavy cream. Now I am just using grocery store milk products. This is not like um, previously when I made the video for the cream cheese, the farmer's cheese, what have you, I used milk that was direct from the farm that was not ultra high temperature pasteurized and it was, it was delicious. But many of us only have access at this point. I don't have access to that milk anymore. Many of us only have access to what the grocery store has to offer, which is going to be ultra high temperature pasteurized which means the milk has been pasteurized beyond 168 degrees. So that farmer's cheese and cream cheese, this is gonna work for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this over my burner, medium low heat, and I'm gonna wait for it to come to 172 degrees, and I will bring you back and I'll show you what that looks like. You'll not need a thermometer if you pay attention. When it starts to get bubbly all around the outside of the vessel, that's when you'll know that your milk is hot enough to acidulate. We'll be back when it's time to do that. All right, we've had this heating on the stove and we are actually just perfect. See, just above 170, between 170 and 180. You will know if you don't have a thermometer, little bubbles will start to form around the edge of the vessel and it will be perfectly hot. Now, a skin may start to form on the top because of the high cream content in here, so don't worry about it. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to pour in our buttermilk. So if you do get it a little bit warmer than you think you should have, the buttermilk's gonna cool it down a bit. The buttermilk is going to act as somewhat of an acidulator, but it's not going to be enough or high enough in acid. So we're gonna use an acidulator. I previously mentioned I was gonna use apple cider vinegar, but because I thought I was out of lemon juice and I realized when I went to put lemon juice in my grocery cart for my online order, I realized I had some of this on hand. So we're gonna use approximately a cup right now. The thing with the lemon juice or the vinegar is you're gonna use as much as you need to acidulate your cheese. So I'm gonna pour in a cup and then I'm gonna to start to stir it. You can already see that it's starting to separate and curdle and that's what you want. So don't be alarmed because this is how it's supposed to look. 
if you think that you need to add more, then it's okay to add more because that acidulator is going to end up in the waste. It's not going to overly flavor your cheese. Hmm. So, and you can see how it's starting to curdle, but it's not curdled enough for me. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more. Now that was a cup that I put in at first. I'm gonna put in another half a cup now. You need to add enough acid for the whey to begin separating. And what we're gonna do now, because that's gonna be good for me, we're gonna put the lid on this and we're gonna let it sit. And I'm gonna let it sit a good long time. I'm gonna let it sit for at least an hour. With the heat off. With the heat off, and then we're gonna come back. In fact, you should take it off the burner, just to be sure that you are not having it on top of the heat. We're gonna pack it an hour, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like, and then we're gonna go through the straining and hanging process. Okay, it's been actually a couple of hours. The beautiful part of cream cheese is, if you have stuff to do, you can just leave it on the back of the stove with a lid on it, and do your stuff, and then you can come back when it's convenient for you to strain it. So we're gonna be ready to strain it, and I have a big strainer, I have a big bowl in my sink, and then I have this flour sack towel that I'm going to use as cheesecloth. So I'm gonna pour what's in the pot in its entirety in here. This bowl is gonna catch the, the waste or the whey, and then the strainer is going to catch what will be our cream cheese. So I'm gonna go get that, and we're gonna go ahead and strain it. Like I said, our cheese has been sitting for quite a while, but look. It's nice and thick when you press it. You can see the whey coming up there. That means the cheese is setting properly. Now we're gonna take it over to the sink and we're gonna strain it through the cheesecloth or the flour sack towel that I have prepared. And I neglected to mention my flour sack towel, I have dampened and I have wrung it out and then I put it in the strainer. Now we're just going to pour this in there. And now you're gonna let that strain. It might take a few minutes, but you'll see it go down. And then I'll show you what it looks like after it has drained completely. Smells like cheese. Smells like cheese. Okay, something happened to the audio on this particular clip of the video. So, little voice over here. I've taken the towel, I've gathered all of the corners together, and I wrapped it with a rubber band very securely. Then I took the ends of that towel and I tied them in a loop. And here I'm going to tie it, um, hang it over the, the knob on my cabinet door with the pot underneath it to catch any residual drainage that is still in there. The majority of the liquid has gone, but now we want to hang it because hanging it is going to help it use its own weight to dry out and it's going to be absolutely solid and delicious. And now we just wait, leave it to hang for about an hour, an hour and a half, however long you need to. When you come back, it'll be cooled and it'll be somewhat solid. And when that happens, I'll come back and I'll show you what this looks like because you're gonna be amazed at how it looks and how it's gonna turn into cream cheese almost immediately. All right, we had our cheese hanging for, uh, it's been at least an hour. And I just wanted to show you, this is how much whey was uh, drained off of it just from hanging there. This is really, really helpful if you are able to hang it. If you're not, then I suggest putting it in a colander over a pot and just leaving it to sit because it will still drain. But um, that's a lot of liquid that has drained off of there and that's what you want. So I'm just gonna set this aside. And now we have our cheese and I've unbridled it from the rubber band and you can just scrape down the sides of your towel you're probably not going to get all of it off but it's really you're not going to lose that much and there you have your cheese now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pop it in this bowl i have under here oops just like that. And now I'm gonna take my hand mixer. Now you don't have to add anything else. And I see some recipes where they've left out the heavy cream in the main process and they add it in at the end and they whip it. There's enough heavy cream in here and butter fat to whip this and that's what we're gonna do right now and then we're gonna season it. So we're gonna go ahead and whip this until it's nice and smooth. Yeah. 
Now as you whip it, you're going to see a distinctive change in the texture. It's going to go from being kind of grainy and odd looking to being this beautiful, smooth, I mean look silky. at that. Look at how silky it is. It's so beautiful. And now look, I'm going to show you a finished product that's been done for about five, six days actually. And I'm going to show that to you in a minute, but first we're going to season this. Now, like I said, I have a tablespoon of kosher salt here. You can adjust this to your liking. I have found that this is a good amount for this amount of cheese. And we're going to beat this together again. Now we're going to scrape it down one more time. And this is going to firm up once you put it in the refrigerator. I, I mean, you can enjoy this on crackers now if you want, but I don't really suggest eating it right away. This is better if it has a chance to cure and has a chance to firm up and all the flavors have a chance to meld and the cheese has a chance to settle and it just needs a little bit of time to ripen, so to speak. You can taste this now. Um, you can taste it for your seasoning. That's very good. Now, when you taste it right after you make it, you may taste a distinctive lemon flavor or vinegar flavor because of what you use to acidulate your cheese. But once you let this sit in the fridge for a while, that is going to dissipate. What do you think, babe? It's good. I'm going to go ahead and put this in a container and then I'm going to bring out the one that I made previously so I can show you. All right. So here is the cream cheese we made today. It's nice and smooth and it's nice and soft. You see how soft it is? This is the cream cheese I previously made and is it has tightened up very well. I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's still soft, but it's firmed up really well. It tastes amazing. It's super creamy and it has a nice tang to it. And now you have homemade cream cheese. I mean, that wasn't hard. It took a little bit of time, like I said. You need to make sure that you're going to have a day because this is a process, but it's a delicious result. And this is the amount that you get from one recipe. Again, this is how much we got from one recipe. Um, I'd say there's at least three cups from that we rendered. Now, cheese making, you're always going to get a lot less a finished product than you started with liquid product. So keep that in mind, but the results are delicious. And now we're going to make some videos using this cream cheese. I'm going to make some flavored cream cheese spread. I'm going to do a no baked cheesecake and I'm going to do a baked cheesecake and we're going to see how they work because that's what everyone asks. Can I use this cream cheese to make a cheesecake? It's something that I have too, because I really don't know the answer. So I guess we're going to find out. So in upcoming videos, we're going to make some things and we're going to see how they work out. So that's how you make homemade cream cheese. It's very easy, but it is a process. You need to take some time and it's a little bit of effort, but not too much. Take some ingredients and it's not going to be cheaper than buying it in the store. And if you can find it in the store, because there have been shortages in different places and that's a disappointment when you want to make a specific item. Always know that now you know how to make it and you're going to be able to do that because there's not a shortage on milk and cream and half and half and what have you. But like I said, you're not going to be able to make cream cheese for what you buy cream cheese for. Just the same, you're not going to be able to make anything like this cheaper than you would be able to buy it because you're making it in your home in a very small scale and you're making it with no heavy equipment. You're making it with no factory on a line. You're not using uh, thickeners and chemicals and additives. This is pure ingredients here. Milk, cream, buttermilk, lemon juice, salt, and thyme. That's all that went into this. So it may not be the same texture as the stuff from the grocery store because it doesn't have commercial thickeners in it, but you're going to be able to use this and it's going to be delicious. This is going to keep well in your refrigerator for up to a month, but you don't want to freeze this. You're going to want to keep it in your fridge in an airtight container and just let it hang out and then use it. So I hope that you learned something. I hope that you give making cream cheese a try from scratch and I hope that you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya.